Did you know that the middle of the galaxy smells like rum and tastes like raspberries? Uh, Nicole, you're sure you didn't just sneak a flask into Lush Cosmetics again? You're gonna end up on a list. Are you two okay? This, this is, is a hot, hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show we take on the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Inayidi. And we have a very special guest joining us today. She has a PhD from UC Davis. Go Aggies, baby! With a focus in flavor chemistry. She co-founded the Fermentation Lab at Noma. She served as the science officer for Alton Brown's TV show, Good Eats. And she is the author of Flavorama, a guide to unlocking the art and science of flavor. Ariel Johnson, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Do we call you Dr. Johnson? Uh, you can if you want, yes! but I never make anyone do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Have we had a doctor on the show before? Oh yeah, Dr. Literally Mike. somebody called Dr. Mike. Oh yeah, but Dr. I Mike. like Dr. Johnson more. And he was okay, very particular about it. He was like, I need you to spell it out, D-O-C-T-O-R, because that's what we have the trademark in, I believe. Wow, uh, okay. And he was very nice. Go off, it, King. You should trademark uh, Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, you are one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life, uh, which is really fantastic. And I love that you put all of that smarts uh, into food and especially into this incredible book. Absolutely. Um, tell us, uh, you know, a couple of key takeaways from the book and how you got here. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I wrote this book. I mean, I studied flavor like as a scientist, but like I really got into it because I wanted to like make things more creative and delicious mm -hmm. and amazing um, out in the real world. So, uh, you know, once I'd kind of like absorbed all there was to know about this. I'd talk to people about it and like everyone loves flavor, but like nobody understands how it works or Fair. even that like there is any science involved sure. or that there's anything understandable about it. Um, so yeah, it's not just vibes. I mean, <laughs> there are vibes involved. Um, but uh, yeah, there's like real molecules. So like flavor is taste and smell. I guess one takeaway is that smell is as important, if not mm -hmm. more important sure. for flavor than taste. Um, and uh uh, sorry, like, wow, which, which, which takeaway? I have to think about every single takeaway and compare them together <laughs> to uh, find the most uh, simplest one. I mean, I think, I think, like, the big thing is, you know, people, you see, like, expert cookbooks or, like, books about science, and a lot of it's kind of intimidating mm -hmm. and, yes. like, trying to tell you what Quite. to do and, like, that, oh, you have to, like, study this to use it. Like, everything in here is designed to work with, like, the most casual of cooking. Um, so it's really about, like, informing your intuition about cooking and understanding why you're doing what you're doing rather yeah. than telling you, like, what to do. No, I love that. I use a phrase in the book, using flavor science as a liberating tool for innovating in the kitchen. Because yeah. so many people, they mm -hmm. get locked into this right. idea. I know so many, um, I lovingly use the term, like, cooking nerds, right? Sure. I remember having somebody explain to me um, the science of a the glutamate formation in my yard reaction, yada, yada, as he made me a steak and his steak sucked. Right. Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah. God bless you know, him. But, been there, done that. But, yeah. but like you said, there are yeah. certainly like vibes involved. Mm. Um, and whenever anybody says cooking is science, it's like, absolutely. But everything is science. I have no idea how this microphone works right now whatsoever. Science has something wizard to do with in there. It, I'm sure. Of course, of course. <laughs> um, but that's what I love, that you actually digest it and you, like, give people usable information sure, in there. Sure, yeah. Yeah, well, like, I, uh, you know, as soon as I finished my PhD, I moved to Denmark and started working at a restaurant called Noma all the time. Ever heard of it? Yeah. Um, huh? <laughs> have you? So, uh, yeah, for, like, two and a half years, I was constantly figuring out how to, like, Talk to talk to chefs and be like, well, I know you understand how this works in a mm. practical way, and like I understand like the theory, sure. but like how do I communicate this to you who like have not taken chemistry mm. at a college level or something like that? So like once you uh, you know explain that over and over and over and over and over again, then the uh, <laughs> the actual useful parts become much uh, much clearer. Were you ever out there foraging alongside any of the chefs and stuff? Oh, yeah, I have uh, many memories trying to climb, like, elderberry trees. Oh, <laughs> flowers. Oh. Or, I was going to say fistful of currants. But yeah, nice exactly, know exactly. Uh, you know, <laughs> pick, picking, like, black currant buds in the wow. rain and uh, stuff like that. Very glamorous. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. How yeah. cool. I, I think it's fascinating because I've, I've known a lot of chefs who, you know, drop out of school at age 15 and yep. end up cooking. Absolutely, and yeah. I know a lot of people who, and intelligence is measured in many different ways, of course, um, but I know a lot – this one chef once explained to me the reason that you soak liver in milk is because things want to be how they exist in nature, and milk is a body fluid, ergo, liver exists in the body naturally. It wants to be in a bodily fluid, and that's why milk t makes liver taste okay. good. Okay. You're sure this was a chef and not like a 17th doula? century alchemist? <laughs> <laughs> a weird doula 
how you yeah, found off of yeah, Craigslist. Yeah, yeah. He put a lot of leeches on me, and I was like, this seems normal. A lot of bloodletting. But he yeah, made by far the best foie gras torchon I've ever right. had. And so it's almost like yeah. he's, you know, arriving at the correct conclusion using the wrong science. Yeah. What is the importance in, like, kind of understanding the right science? Well, I mean, I, I think about it like uh, the difference between – being able to follow a recipe, which, like, is important, mm-hmm. is, yeah. like, you know, putting ways up on your phone and following the GPS turn by mm-hmm. turn. Mm-hmm. Understanding, like, how and why things actually work are, like, if your phone dies or ways goes down, do you understand, like, the city's roads enough sure. to find your way around? No. No, Ariel, I don't. <laughs> really? I do. I'm pretty good. But, like, drop me off in Frogtown? God help me. Uh, I cannot get around. I, I once – I'm so sorry for this aside, no, but no, it just it. illustrates how I view the world and exist in right. it. I once um, – my phone died died in my car and the charger wasn't working and I have two turns to get home. I literally live four miles away in North Hollywood. We're in Burbank. It's one straight shot going west. Okay. And I was like, surely I know how to get home. I've been making this drive for six months. Yeah. I ended up in what I thought was my neighborhood and I looked around and nothing looked familiar. I finally got my phone to charge. I was 1.2 miles away. Oh Amazing. my gosh. Amazing. Yeah. So, uh, so wouldn't it be yeah. cool if you could do that? <laughs> 100%. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think a lot this of people teaches you to do that. A lot yeah. of people um, somewhat instinctively we were just talking about the science of like reducing a sauce and yeah. you have an incredible graph in there such a great graph yeah thank yeah, you yeah. Thank yeah oh no 100 and the artwork in the book's incredible <laughs> yeah, it's very cute but for some people like for me it was always intuitive right of, yeah you yeah. see steam rising steam is Vapors, water and yeah, you're like you're looking at how thick it's getting and is it taking on a color mm-hmm. and like i mean it's the kind of thing you know most of humanity's knowledge was developed through trial and error mm-hmm. uh, sure. and you know it took like inventing the scientific method to get like an idea about mechanism mm-hmm. um so yeah i mean for me just like chemistry is really about mechanisms and mm. uh i would rather teach chemistry to somebody who can like sear a steak or do a foie gras torchon and have them like understand why they're doing what they're mm. doing than like start someone just off on pure chemistry and then be like okay now cook something tasty yeah yeah, yeah. that's interesting yeah. well the thing that we really wanted to get into today um we recorded another podcast um with uh, your homie dave arnold yeah Cooking um, issues. Cooking yeah. issues. Check it out. <laughs> uh, and somebody asked a question about limoncello LaCroix, and you'd never had it before. And I ran yeah. to the fridge to get you oh one. Yeah. He and told me about this. I was so impressed. Yeah, and yeah. You, I watched you, like, crack it open Shocked. and sniff it, and you were like, there's obviously a vanilla compound. They're probably using sodium butyrate. I'm making up chemicals here. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> it, was, it was really incredible to watch it in action. Trademark that one. <laughs> and so we wanted to talk today about the concept of snack companies just sort of running out of flavors. There's okay. been a recent run of uh, Coca-Cola launched, what is it called? The Creators Program. Sure. Where Ooh. they introduced a uh, Coca-Cola Starlight flavor. Oh, and we yeah. have right here. This is Galaxy Flavored Torani Syrup. Wow. If anyone can see. Uh, Cosmic. And there was a, uh, God, some sort of headline that came out in 2009 that the middle of the galaxy uh, apparently tastes like raspberries and smells like rum. Do you know what any of that's about? Um... Okay, we might have to fact check me remembering the name of the molecule correctly. I believe, well, okay, so like take, taking a step back, okay. like flavor is molecules. And mm-hmm. so like, you know, so, some of those molecules are usually made by like plants or cooking, but like chemistry can happen anywhere. So, you know, there's lots of like carbon and methane and like the building blocks of the stuff floating out in space and mm. crashing together and getting like hit by UV rays. Eventually, like just from pure chemistry, you'll form like very simple sugars and other small molecules. Um, my organic chemistry professor described it as space candy. Uh, mm. Yeah. Um, so I believe the, uh, <laughs> in addition to sugars, uh, I believe it's ethyl formate, which is like one of the smallest and simplest fruity smelling molecules that you can make that's also oh. in raspberries and rum gets made in this sort of like cosmic juice of, uh, of molecules. And that's uh, wild. I mean, it's kind of like a, like if, if, uh, if a, if a smell molecule forms in space and no one's there to smell it, like, does it have does an it aroma? Have does it have a yeah. flavor? We uh, got to send someone out there to smell it. I know, yeah. We got to send someone to the center Why of the galaxy. Did you Nicole, make direct eye contact up. with me? <laughs> what? You love adventures. You, you all say you don't get out of the house well enough. Space? Yeah, I think you very well in space. I already poured this in my cup a little bit. Oh, God. Oh, this But this I also mixed it with hot water. Yeah, the color is like alarming. deep violet? It's oh, wow. It is almost like a very, think, like, blue. Why do you think they went with that color, though? Because I would never equate the galaxy with, like, this weird muted violet color. Well, I think, like, I mean, if you look at it head on, uh, going back to my wine, wine tasting <laughs> days. Yeah, if you look at it head on, it's, like, so dark that it's almost black. And then if you kind of tilt it a little bit, you see this, like, inky blue-purple mm-hmm. tinge to it. I mean, I guess it kind of looks like the night sky. And mm. yeah, maybe the closest Fair. thing to, like, the absence of... 
color. So a void? Yeah, a void. If you it's, will. it's void colored. It's void colored, if you will. Drink the void. Drink the void. <laughs> yeah, do the do is so 2008. Um, but no, t- take a sip of this. I'm curious about what you're tasting. Yeah, I mean, it's like very, very sweet, very raspberry. Mm-hmm. Like, not so much raspberry jam, but kind of like raspberry top notes. Mm. Uh, light and heady. Like you pushed a raspberry in between your fingers. Yeah, almost. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Although now, I mean, like, I may be being thrown off by, like, the color and the viscosity. Mm-hmm. Tasting it, it kind of reminds me of, um, like, Dimatap mm-hmm. cough medicine. Medi- Did yeah. you ever take that when you were a yeah, kid? Yeah, The, like, purple totally, grape stuff? Totally. I'm getting grape otter pop. Yeah, it's not, like, full on. Actually, I mean, there's, like, a cotton candy kind of nuance to it. Yeah. Can I ask about the cotton candy thing? Mm. Um, so a lot of people say we have tried all of these new Coca-Cola products. And the reason we said snack companies are running out of flavors mm-hmm. is because I remember – Every new Coca-Cola product uh, that came out when sure. I was a kid, you know, you had, um, you know, Vanilla Coke was relatively new at the time. They did an yeah. orange Coke. They Cherry did a Coke. blood yeah. orange Coke Ooh. when they launched Why? these, like, fancy Diet Coke flavors. They did a raspberry Coke. Um, they even had the Coke Black, the espresso Coke. Oh, yeah, you love that came that out. One, right? But yeah. these are all flavors that exist within nature. And mm-hmm. then it seems as if they've sort of run out. And now their flavors are called like Coca Cola GX three thousand partnered with Rosalia. Actually, that that one was called Coca Cola Move partnered mm, with Rosalia. Sure. And all of their flavor notes are paired with like verbs and emotions. Mm-hmm. Like this tastes like excitement and hope. And I think that's what the Galaxy thing is. But a lot of the tasting notes that people get, they all say cotton candy. Yeah. What is that cotton candy thing that people are tasting? Um, cotton candy, well, so, like, when you make cotton candy, you, like, melt sugar and spin yeah. it into this, like, fine filament. Basically, mm-hmm. like, as soon as you start applying heat to sugar, it starts breaking down. Sure. And, uh, like, kind of, it's almost like uh, like a truck hitting your car mirror and, like, shearing it off. That yep. happens to it. And so it gets all these, like, kind of naked edges and then becomes, like, smellable uh, in addition to tasteable. So um, mm. ethyl maltol is one of those byproducts of, yeah, uh, like, Whoa. melting and the early caramelization of sugar. So it's basically, like, simple sim- simple things formed when you start to break down sugar. But don't break it down all the way. That would be getting more into caramel. Mm-hmm. And cotton candy is mostly clear, not, uh, you know. Caramelized. That's fascinating because you you like smell a bucket of sugar and you don't really smell anything. Exactly, but if yeah. you smelled cotton candy, even after it's cooled down, right? Like it does it have a smell to smell. it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Also, they are pouring. They're pouring. You know, their blue razes and their pink, whatever that that smell. Uh, the the association is just yeah. like a carnival uh, sure. vibe. Yeah. Uh, it's incredible. I mean, blue raspberry is kind of the OG flavor that didn't exist. Right. And yeah. And they just yeah, like yeah. conjure it from nothing, but now it certainly exists in yeah. in our consciousness. Which I think is incredible. Um, have you noticed anything just like watching snack food trends change over the years from like a, a chemistry perspective? Oh, um, I mean, like a big one is obviously like spicy mm-hmm. snacks. Sure. Like they were not as popular, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. And now like everything has to have a spicy version. Everything. And uh, I mean, that's a molecule. That's capsaicin, uh, the uh, spicy component in peppers. Um, yeah, I mean, like... A lot of these flavors, you know, even if they're named after things from nature, even if it's like, oh, this is this is cheese mm. or like this is blue raspberry. I mean, not that there was blue raspberry, but yeah, a raspberry. Yeah. Um, they'll be named after things in nature, but like the way that these snacks are made, they'll take like all of these flavorless ingredients mm. to make, you know, like the chip or the liquid or whatever and then like add a flavor to it. So like the flavor comes in a bottle from a flavor house. There's mm. like several of these places that just like compose flavors from – you know, bare molecules all day long. So cool. uh, kind of like, I don't know, early electronic music when you had to like <laughs> program a synthesizer to make a noise. Yeah. So cool. um, yeah. So, uh, so, you know, now they're making more abstract sounding ones, but even when all of the flavors had like a, a referent in reality, they were still not made from that thing. So you wouldn't like distill a piece of cheese and then make like cheese chips out of it. You would yeah. take like isolated butyric acid and diacetyl and like several other things and then like blend it together. So there's always this like element of making things up mm-hmm. uh, involved in like creating flavors. So it's not like necessarily that surprising that people would start being like, well, if we're making things up anyway, let's just like make everything up. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting because I always yeah. thought about it from a perspective of I knew Coke wasn't adding actual raspberry juice into mm-hmm. their raspberry flavored mm-hmm. Coke, yeah. but at least the fact that it had a basis in reality, I was like, 
oh, this makes sense. But no, it was always they were retrofitting the term raspberry into just a combination of chemicals pulled from the void. Yeah. And so now they might as well be doing that with uh, Coca-Cola Soul Blast um, or th- – <laughs> It was launched alongside I actually, uh, Thousand well, Year Blood War. It had an action flavor. Is, I actually can't tell if you're joking. Right I'm now. serious. Oh, okay, no, cool. Did you say yeah, Thousand yeah. Year Blood War? Uh, was a flavor? So, uh, Bleach <laughs> Thousand Year Blood War is, I believe, an anime. Oh, it's an movie. anime. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Coca-Cola, but Coca Cola Soul Blast was launched Coca-Cola in Thousand Year Blood War. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Tastes like metal, I guess. God, it surely does. And and yeah, there was Coca-Cola Y3000. (laughs) Okay. um, That uh, tasting notes were, uh, quote, liquid from maraschino cherries mixed with grape cough syrup. Even has a little bit of that medicinal burn was from one food critic trying it. Wow. um, Which is fantastic. But but my question is, what what does Coca-Cola gain from doing all of these silly, wacky, wild things? Like, like what's the point? It, like... (laughs) Being inventive, getting new people to to come buy the Cokes. I don't understand the purpose of it. I mean, I think, like, a lot of it is just marketing and, like, trying yeah. to maintain market share. I mean, mm-hmm. like, Coca-Cola, just plain regular Coca-Cola as a, like, manufactured product mm-hmm. is about, like, as close to perfect mm-hmm. as you I get. agree. Yeah. Why oh. mess around with yeah. perfection just to be innovative? I, I mean, like, you know, so if you, like, start, start it, it's almost like a tail wagging the dog thing sure. instead mm-hmm. of, like, oh, we want this thing so we're going to respond to it. It's like, well, if we, like, make this, th- this thing that's crazy, people will talk about it and get excited about it. You'll be hearing the name Coca-Cola all the time. Sure. And then the next time you go to the store, you'll be like... Maybe I'll try to find, you know, uh, uh, Warlord Skull Throne Coca-Cola, <laughs> and then if you can't find it, you'll just buy, like, vanilla Coke and stuff. What, yeah. was, that, uh, what was that thing that Lay's did where they had, what, like, four Do flavors? us a flavor challenge. Do us a flavor. Okay. Do you remember this? I don't, actually. So, uh, Josh, I think you might know more about it, but they-, they Oh, I submitted. Like, oh, I submitted <laughs> to no Lay's Do us a flavor. You did. Like, they, they decided on, like, a cappuccino flavor, mm-hmm. a okay. chicken and waffles flavor, and they some sure other did. ones. I don't know if you want to, like- uh, So, yeah, like, a lot- of, about the Coke thing and the new stuff, mm-hmm. yeah, they definitely – all of their sales are from Diet Coke and regular Coke. Okay. That's like a vast – it's like 90% plus. Yeah. And it's these new things that just get their name spiked so in media. Silly. It's the same way that mm-hmm. uh, 7-Eleven introduces a Halo 3 Mountain Dew flavored Slurpee so they can sell more cigarettes and lotto tickets. Fair. Yeah. Right? It's not about the Fair. Slurpees. It's about getting people – The loss leader. The loss leader, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think it's fascinating. Um, but no, uh, the Lay's Do Us a Flavor Challenge, it came out in – what was it? 2014 was the first time they did it. They had 14.4 million uh, submissions to it. They basically asked people, hey, we've run out of flavors. We need you to submit (laughs) new ones. They did, but it was was a really fantastic campaign, and I got really excited about it until I actually tasted all of them, Mm -hmm. and there wasn't a single flavor that I was like, oh, this could actually compete with the other one. So we'll go through the winners from every year. There were a lot. Um, First year, bacon, mac, and cheese, which – to makes me, sense. Makes a fair amount of sense, right? And it was yeah. like the height of but that bacon, bacon, bacon mania. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, but that had, bacon flavor, it just bothers me so like, much. Oh, I like, love liquid, liquid, liquid smoke. smoke. Oh, yeah. I like, love liquid fat. smoke. Yeah. Don't yeah. love it. Don't love it. Um, I remember. Okay, so one, I don't think it was the Lay's Do Us a Flavor Challenge, but it was in their era where they eventually flipped it to like the Lay's Taste uh, Taste of America and then Passport to Flavor. Where they were getting international. international. Uh, no, they did because they yeah. had a Sichuan chicken flavored Lay's chips that I ruined a fantasy football draft party by because that was the only chips I got. Uh, and they're they, they like mala flavored. Do they have like Sichuan peppercorn? I wish. Like licking a battery? I wish they did. Um, also, <laughs> we made we Love made mala. mala chips here when yeah, we made our yeah, puffer yeah. fish flavored Amazing. chips. Sure, I remember. Um, which is really fun. But no, the they had this like deeply just burnt meat flavor to the Ooh. chips that was really unsettling. And I looked on the list of ingredients, and it said, um, like, Lay's Natural Browned Wok Flavor, and it had a trademark on uh, it. Oh, okay. So, ha- Wok Hay? Wok- they, exactly. Literally. Yeah, yeah, they made Wok Hay into a <laughs> flavor? And boy, does it not translate on <laughs> oh chips. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but how would you go about, like, making something like that from scratch? Uh, yeah, so the first thing I would do, if I, yeah, like, Wok Hay Flavor, for example, <laughs> um, is I would fire up the trusty gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. Um, oh, which sorry, is go the, back to, what, what was that? What was that? <laughs> a uh, uh, so a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. Um, you remember okay. like earlier when I was talking about my PhD, and it was like we're all just a bunch of chemists measuring different things. So yes. yeah, a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer is how you measure flavor molecules. Uh, so you know the, the flavor flavors are mostly like a soup of many molecules together. So mm-hmm. this this machine, this instrument, very carefully like separates them all from each other, and then like tells you what they are all in a row, and then you can also like 
you know, calculate how much of each you have uh, if you do more work. But yeah, so like the first, the first thing would be like, okay, so I'd like make some wok food mm -hmm. uh, and or maybe even just like you know, heat up a wok really high and then... oil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, we have, like, different ways of, like, collecting smells, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so you you basically get, like, it's like a little needle and it has, like, like you... It's a little needle and you can push a, like, thread that's inside the needle out and it's, like, coated with this, like, coating that's very sticky to smells. So you, like... Collects it. Yeah, like e extract it, like put it in the, we call it the headspace because, you know, uh, smells kind of, well, the reason you can smell them is because they travel through this the air. Sure. So they're like, uh, you can't see it, but you'd imagine like you, there's your food and then there's this like cloud of flavor molecules above it in the headspace. Um, collect those molecules, put them in the gas chromatograph, separate them all from each other, figure out what they were, and then go about uh, trying to see if there's like, is there a commercial source for this? Do we wow. need to just like, cook a wok a thousand times and then like extract it and mm -hmm. put that in somehow. Um, I mean, that is kind of how like natural flavors work. Uh, Wait, how do natural flavors work? Well, okay, so like Josh um, and I are in a state of shock right now. Yeah, so, <laughs> this thing we love this. We're like we're like basking <laughs> in the glow of your intelligence. Thank you so much. Keep going. <laughs> um, well, okay, so like you ever look on like an ingredients list and it'll say like natural, natural and artificial sure, flavors. Sure. So artificial flavors are just made from like from scratch, from, I don't know, maybe you, like, they used to make vanilla flavor by taking wood pulp and the the woody part of wood, which is called lignin. It's like, like this, the thing that okay. makes wood like wood and not like a bendable stem. Got mm -hmm. it. Um, if you break that up, it'll release basically vanilla smell. So that's one of the reasons oh. why, like, smoke smells kind of sweet, because you're literally, like, breaking Burning down the wood, wood and sure. then creating oh, these, like, they would never vanilla like take, molecules. They would never take vanilla bean. And that would be a natural flavor. Well, they right? yeah. So then to make a natural flavor, that is like flavors that come from a food okay. that they have you know carefully extracted out with I don't know some kind of organic solvent and uh, purified and then bottled. So like right I guess the thing with natural flavors is you know you could have something labeled as a natural flavor like natural raspberry flavor does not mean it comes from a raspberry. It means that the components come from something that was once food. So they might Whoa. then be wow. blended together wow. yeah into uh into something that resembles raspberry that mm -hmm. technically is natural because they didn't do any like chemical synthesis they just did extraction wow. but uh uh comes from things that aren't raspberry fascinating yeah. uh yeah. There, there's been a and i've sort of talked about this before mm -hmm. um i have two things i want to address should we start with beaver buttholes I mean, why not? What's the deal why, with the wait, beaver? Wait, why didn't we start with that from the That's top? That's what I'm saying. What's Josh the deal? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's the thing about the beaver buttholes, right? Mm -hmm. What's going on with those? Oh, are you talking about castorium? That's the one. Castorium. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is, yeah. So, you know, if smell is a big part of flavor. So if you know stuff about fragrances, then oh, that also helps smell. enhance your understanding of flavor oh, and vice huge. versa. So, like, a big thing with um, with fragrances is, like, basically the idea that, like, having a small amount of something really nasty makes all the nice stuff, like, much richer and nicer and more amazing. So Like ambergris? Exactly. Ambergris, which is, like, a type of whale vomit. Mm -hmm. um, castorium, which is the a, next, a beaver, beaver anal <laughs> gland. Um, there's a lot of deer musks and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, so if you smell them in pure form, it's, like... I mean, it's Ugh. it's musk. There's a reason yeah. that we use the term musk for yeah. uh, for other sure. stuff. Um, really intense, really unpleasant, but like just a little bit of it with you know a bunch of other uh, flower smells or something sure. like that gives it like gravitas and uh, sure. uh, deliciousness. So yeah, just a little bit of something horrible uh, makes things taste great. It's like life. Lays exactly. <laughs> fever, <laughs> anal gland. It's coming at you in 2024. Castorium um, chips. <laughs> there's Okay, so uh, you talked about spicy chips, and mm -hmm. I, I remember talking to somebody who was a flavor scientist for Lay's, mm. and they were talking about how it had just become an arms race on how spicy can you make a chip, but there's mm -hmm. obviously going to be a cliff that drops yeah, off where it's absolutely. too spicy for people to consume. Yes. The Packy One Chip Challenge nearly felled me. Uh, so that sent oh, some people to the hospital, I think. Somebody died this, recently. Somebody died? Uh, oh, my gosh. Heart, heart condition died. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough yeah. out there. So point is, the chips are so spicy, they're killing people. Yeah. Um, they've made chips so sour now that, you know, uh, Lil Xan went to the hospital. Like a lesion oh, on yeah, your tongue. Oh, yeah, remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so yeah, there's kind of yeah, nowhere yeah. to go in the spicier sour sector anymore that they haven't hit. What do you think the next frontier is for these snack companies? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, there is, like, an upper limit to how salty you can get. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably as bitter as possible is not going to fly. I mean, umami is, uh, you know, kind of like the dark horse of flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people 
don't know what it is or it's hard to identify. It's basically the taste of savoriness. Sure. Mm. Um, so, I, I mean, I guess you could dip a chip in MSG, which is, uh, you know, glutamate. It's pure umami. And then have, like, the most umami chip that you could ever have. Wow. And it would be, like, very, 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 like, brothy and rich tasting, but just, like, completely uh, – Umami. They already made that, and it came out like four okay. years. No, 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 no. It's called Chicken in a Biscuit. Oh, oh yeah. Have you yeah. had a Chicken in a Biscuit? Oh, it's been a while, but yeah. Pretty yeah. iconic. It's yeah. literally, it's MSG and onion powder, and I swear to God, it is the greatest tasting thing in the world. Mm, um, it is delicious. But no, it would be fascinating to see places go into the, like, the black garlic territory, like yeah. finding these things that have a ton of umami in them, um, but that might be a little bit limiting. And talking about loss leaders, um, the most popular... Uh, flavor of potato chip is plain Ooh. and it outsells every single Absolutely. other flavor as it should one. be I refuse to eat a plain chip unless I'm dipping I love plain chips unless I'm dipping or salt and pepper if it's chips. a really good plain chip then I interestingly like, sorry salt and pepper chips I love salt and pepper chips but okay. have you noticed that like it's not just salt and black pepper there sure, is like yeah. the savory There's... garlicky thing absolutely too. yeah it carries yeah. it yeah, 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 yeah do you like yeah, that yeah. or it not on its own. I mean I like it it's tasty. I would enjoy the opportunity to have just plain black pepper and see what that was. Uh, what Probably that was would be like. boring, though. It might be. I mean, it might, yeah. I don't know. It might be like you know having like a palate cleanser almost. A palate cleanser right. <laughs> after the umami bomb. I think the chip, the chip world, should make a complete harsh left turn and go into like weird sweet. Mm. flavors. I think a blue raspberry chip yeah. would be an absolute <laughs> trip and something that we've never, like, imagine like Laffy Taffy banana but you're chewing in a chip instead of it being like a candy experience. Okay. I think that's something as a human being we haven't seen before and I really want us to, like, explore and see what'll happen with Like that. an apple teeny chip. I oh would. my god. Midori yeah. sour <laughs> chip? Would. Nicole would. loves Midori I, sours. You remember? <laughs> Dude, I started making Midori sours because of you. Oh my and I started god. making Midori spritzes because of you. I have a whole cry. ass bottle of Midori at cry. my home. Uh, you- Cheetos made Sweetos. Mm. They yeah. Made yeah, I mean, if you hit the right, like, sweet, salty thing, I think that's, like, really yeah. nice for people. Honey I mean, butter chips? Exactly. Honey butter chips are delicious. Those yeah. Are yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I think there's some flavors that, like, uh, would be too unfamiliar yeah. for people in a chip context, kind of like this, like, wok hay didn't work as a mm-hmm. chip. There's, like, there's actually, like, a sweet spot where, like, people like things to be, like, novel and yeah. also familiar. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's a point in the middle of, like, medium familiarity, medium novelty that, like, everyone yeah. loves. The maple bacon And then it starts dropping me. off. Yes, the maple yeah. bacon bar is, like, the perfect exactly. middle point exactly. where it came out at the time and it was like, oh, maple syrup, bacon, breakfast plate, right. donut, like, this all makes, all makes sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was all downhill from there. <laughs> um... I'm curious to see where stuff goes. The the rebranding of Sierra Mist to Starry, I think, points in a big direction. Is that what Starry is? Yeah, yeah. I just noted, I thought it was some kind of off brand, oh. like, you know, doc, Dr. Phillips instead of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so, no I grew up more, on Dr. Shasta. so, no more like mountain y, rangy. We don't want yeah, that no, anymore. No, that's like hmm. pastoral, rugged, pioneer, salt of the earth. Happy. No, now we're reaching out to the stars. Happy. We're optimistic. We're oh, living in the digital yeah. age. We're in the cloud. We don't exist in physical form anymore. I totally thought it was like a self confidence thing. Like, Star, like oh, you're like, star. Like, like, oh, it uh, sure shoot, is. Shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you're landing yeah, among see, the starry. That's where I went. You were thinking <laughs> yeah. it was in the galaxy. I was thinking it was all about, like, you know, self esteem. What if I told you, whatever you think, you're right <laughs> as long as you drink the soda? <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> that's what, what you're going. Yeah. Whereas Sierra Mist is only one thing. You're John Muir yeah, who, who, who likes real things? We like AI and the cloud and, uh, you know, no gravity and stuff like that. And we sure like to taste them. <laughs> <laughs> I got good news, Nicole. No, I got great news. I got the best news you have ever heard. The mythical cookbook is officially (gasps) out. It's on sale. We we published it. We wrote a whole damn book, and that's pretty rad. The entire team knocked this one out of the park, and we're excited for you to finally be able to have a step-by-step guide to make some of the best food the two of us have ever tasted in your very home. It's so much more than just a cookbook. It's filled with illustrations, original stories, and photos from the most fun photo shoot we've ever done done. It's perfect for any kitchen, coffee table, bookshelf, whatever, even if you never actually cook a single thing from it. Yeah, that photo shoot was wild. Remember when I passed out on the floor and y'all put shrimp all over my face? Uh, <laughs> all right, order what? yours now at mythicalcookbook.com. You passed out? I was, it was like pretend passed out. Oh, pretend, pretend. There's a picture of me pretend You're passed out. You're an actor. You're acting. I am a thespian. <laughs> and I love thespians. I'm a thespian. Yeah, like not just a face. (laughs) 
Do you want a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing value, exclusive member deals, and recipe inspiration? Yeah, man. Then you want Butcher Box. <laughs> Butcher Box gets high quality meat and seafood delivered right to your doorstep with free shipping always. They have 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood that is humanely raised, which means they don't use antibiotics or added hormones. No, my favorite thing though, Nicole, mm -hmm. it's the convenience. Me too. You know, I hate going to the grocery store. Do you really? I get it. It's stressful yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah, I don't like going that much. Maybe like once or twice a month. Other than that, not really i don't like judgmental butchers either yeah me you know either. you order meat they're always like what are you gonna do with it and i tell them and like you shouldn't cook it like that and it's like well i think we should just leave this relationship to I'm me getting the meat rude. from you sir I'm and sorry. or madam anyways with butcher box they just deliver a big old box of meat to your door <laughs> it's which awesome, is it's yeah. like uh, christmas every day except we're jewish you know and i still eat the pork that's it's okay. like somebody's <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever you want Today, ButcherBox is giving our listeners free ground beef for life of your membership plus an additional $20 off of your first order. Use my link, butcherbox.com slash hot dog, and use code hot dog to get free ground beef for life plus $20 off your first box. That's butcherbox.com slash hot dog and code hot dog. <laughs> I know many of you look at me up here in my ivory tower and you say, wow, he's different. But no, no, dear listeners, I am just like you. I also have tons of subscriptions that I am paying for every single month and do not want or use. Uh, for instance, Nicole, how much European Grand Prix track and field are you watching? Just about zero, like 0% zero of my time is spent doing that. Okay, so we're way different, right? I have to download a new subscription service generally from some European broadcasting corporation to watch uh -huh. these track meets, and then I always intend to cancel it, of course, after outdoor track and field season's over. But then those twelve ninety nine a month payments, they just keep racking up, and sometimes you don't notice them because they just mm. come through an app. But what if I told you there's a service... That can completely get rid of this. Wow, would this service be called Rocket Money? God dang right it is, Nicole. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, which I can't stress this enough, is almost all of them, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with a few tippity taps. I love how the dashboard shows me this month's spending compared to last month so I can clearly see my spending habits. Plus, they help me create a custom budget and keep my spending on track. God, I spend money on so much stupid Thanks stuff. Ugh. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lowering your bills for you by up to 20%. All you got to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you. That's pretty awesome. I didn't know that they did that. That's they should cool. just hire you to call and complain to people. I'm so good oh, at it. so good. <laughs> Rocket Money has over 5 million users and have saved a total of 500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash hot dog. That's rocketmoney.com slash hot dog. Rocketmoney.com slash hot dog. All right, Nicole and Ariel, we've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. Well, it's time for a segment we call Opinions, Opinions are, are Like Casseroles. Like casseroles. <laughs> All right, get to the first opinion. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Nick. I'm from Michigan, a longtime listener, Miss Uncle Kitchen, best YouTube channel out there. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> um, Thank you. So watching the shows, I always thought that the blood lava cake from Food Fears and that mm. the blood taco from Will It Taco Reheated mm. looked like the most interesting stuff Josh ever made. Mm. Um, and after going to London for my honeymoon and having black pudding, mm. I have to say blood really should be put in more dishes here in America. And I'm going to be keeping an eye out for dishes like that. Um, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for all the awesome stuff you do. I agree. I I, yeah. I love blood. I love uh, I love blood in in food. I mean, it sounds like we're being like edgy, no. but uh, you know, like black pudding, morcia, uh, dinu guan in uh, yeah. Filipino mm -hmm. cuisine, all delicious. Sunde from Korea. Mm. Um, I'm there's a French jugged hair dish where they bleed the hair and then they cook it in its own blood and then they emulsify uh, the blended liver. 
into it, and it's all a metaphor for uh, Christ being risen in the springtime. So cool. Oh, so good. But it like the flavor actually comes through, and all of these things are just an animal exists, and you should try and use all the parts. Well, exactly. Of it to yeah, it's your about yes. not not wasting this thing that like Absolutely. gave its life for us to eat it. Hundred yeah. percent. Americans need to have more open minds about eating awful yeah. organs and yeah. blood. Yeah. W- what are the flavors? Because there's some people that are very sensitive to it. Like Rhett and Link, the the founders of this company, uh, Link especially. Like he hates the taste of liver, of blood, mm. of a lot of awful. What are the actual things that you're tasting? Um, I think the thing that turns a lot of people off is the like metallic yeah. mm. flavor. For sure. Um, and uh, we can we can taste metal ions. They're usually bitter tasting. So the the like metallic flavor is actually an aroma. Um, and it's uh, it's kind of it's the same sort of mechanism as when you like pick up a penny and then your fingers smell like a penny. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, the metal will actually like catalyze other molecules like fatty acids mm-hmm. and things like that to form to like break down and form into like smaller volatile molecules. So mm. you get like aldehydes and um, the the smell of the flavor of like raw meat that can be like quite intense in like blood and stuff is uh, epoxy is Whoa. the molecule so I think I think some people are uh, especially put off by those flavors damn that's rad <laughs> that's so rad but when you cook it it kind of mm. it like, gets rid of that doesn't it that that metallicness of, of blood kind of goes away right? When you cook blood? Yeah, I mean, like... Or maybe you mask it with all the onions and garlic. Yeah, it, it, like, it, it, <laughs> it depends. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think... Well, and, like, you know, everybody has... We have, like, 400 different types of olfactory receptor. Mm. And so everyone has, like, a different kind of profile of do they have more of this one or more of that one. Uh, so it's definitely possible for some flavors to be, like, much more intense to, you know, person A versus person mm. B. Sure. Yeah. And that can be good or that can be, like, off-putting. There, there's a stat that people very casually throw around that uh, taste is actually 70% smell. Mm-hmm. Is there any validity that to that number or, or how does that interact? Uh so I, I think what they what they're referring to is that like flavor is both taste and smell. Mm. So like strictly speaking, taste is just what happens on your on your tongue with taste buds. So like sweet, sour, salty, bitter, umami. If you're mm. talking like metallic aromas or roasted meat or coffee or floral or fruity, whatever, that's all smell. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you've ever if you've ever had a cold or like more likely if you got COVID in the mm-hmm. last four years and you like lose your sense of smell and like food tastes really flat and boring, um, it doesn't actually change the taste of the food, literally speaking. That is just flavor minus smell. So it's like taste without smell. Um, so if you think about how muted that is when you yeah. when you can't smell versus when you can, um, Obviously, like smell is a huge part of that. It would be, it's like, I don't know, actually know how you would like quantify mm, the percentage. Sure. I think it like depends on the situation. I mean, because also smells without tastes can be a little weird seeming as well. But uh, yeah, I guess as a, uh, as a thought provoking statistic <laughs> that makes people appreciate that smell is a big part of flavor. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 70%. Why not? Science <laughs> communication. <laughs> 100% accurate all the time. 60% of the time. <laughs> all models are wrong, but some are useful. <laughs> Hi, Josh and Nicole. This is Grace from Buffalo, New York, and I've got some opinions and questions. Oh, my gosh. So, as someone from the city where chicken wings originated from, why do places outside of Buffalo call them buffalo wings? Mm. They should be called chicken wings only and should be ordered as hot, medium, mild, or barbecue. Mm. I just, I I hate the term buffalo wings. Also, I'm a vegetarian, but I will (laughs) always defend the proper way to eat chicken wings. You must eat them with blue cheese, which I find disgusting, but eating them with ranch calls for war. Oh, thanks for listening. <laughs> Love y'all. And go Bills. Go Bills Mafia. So, like, you don't call them French fries in France. No, you, you call, call them frites. You call them frites. You yeah. call them fries. Yeah. You don't call them buffalo wings in Buffalo. Fries <laughs> <laughs> I went to a restaurant in the year of our Lord 2018 in El Reno, Oklahoma, and they had freedom fries on the menu. Oh my god. I don't even Amazing. remember why people were mad at France. Well, I think they it's didn't like I- I- Iraq War or something like that. So like, this is, this is like a 20-year-old argument. I know, yeah. I yeah. Know. Gosh. <laughs> Give it up. Um, 
But anyways, uh, yeah, I, I I get that. People from Buffalo, they have one food that mm. was two foods that were invented there, but nobody cares about beef on weck anymore. Fortunately, have you read a beef on weck? Yeah, yeah, so super good. good. It's incredible. Yeah, super good. yeah, that yeah. should have been Be- better than buffalo wings. I would say. I agree. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, she mentioned that blue cheese is disgusting. Are you a blue cheese fan? Uh, in certain contexts, I'm a blue cheese fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like good to balance out the like high acid, high spicy sure. of buffalo sauce. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, this is interesting. So, like, buffalo wings are fascinating to me as a case study of how to balance flavors Mm, mm -hmm. because you just have capsaicin and vinegar and salt. Yeah. And then you throw basically pure fat, like Mm -hmm. dairy fat, into the mix. And it's this incredible alchemy, and you can use that knowledge for anything. But in terms of pairing that with ranch versus blue cheese, Mm. like, from a science perspective— what do you think works better? Because we had this debate, ranch versus blue sure cheese. Did. I'm a ranch guy, perennially. I'm a blue cheese girl. I love the I, herbs. I think specifically, I, I generally prefer ranch and ranch-like dressings, mm-hmm. like, you know, categorically if I had to pick one. But, like, specifically for the wings, I think there's something about the, like, funk of blue cheese that just, like, mm-hmm. really synergizes well with that, like, punchy, spicy, mm-hmm. pungent thing of, uh, of, of the buffalo sauce. Uh, so... I would, yeah, I would go with blue cheese, definitely, if offered the choice. Lactonic mold wins again, Josh. Oh, <laughs> oh look, yes. go with the science I know words. words. Damn. Um, I just, what's, but the thing that, like, I'm confused about is why not put respect on Buffalo Wings' name? Like, what's mm. the problem? What? Self-loathing Buffalonians, man. Let me man, tell you, being you know? from Buffalo, you should be proud that one of the greatest things that come out of your town city is the is the chicken wing and covered in delicious sauce i would say no do some deep-seated reflection think about what you're saying here I, my I friend do, grace i do find it difficult to believe that no one ate a chicken wing before <laughs> yeah, that, someone in buffalo i think it's the sauce decided to I right so that sauce, so yeah. then that like as a as a style of wing yeah. i think would be properly called buffalo wing. right it's sort of like you know uh you can't call it champagne unless it's from mm. the champagne region exactly. of france if it's a uh the wrong sauce on buffalo wings. Right. It's just a, uh, uh, chicken a wing? sparkling chicken wing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Can we make it? Oh, that sounds of horrible. Of course we can make it. Uh, Taco Bell put Pop Rocks in a burrito like a couple of years mm. ago and tried to make a sparkling burrito and it was not good. Were <laughs> we the don't... Pop Rocks sweet? Yeah, they were. Oh, they were just, I know. You, you can make an unsweetened sh- Pop sh- Rock shred, but like sugar gives it like that. Less sweet, yeah. Yeah. Use like isomalt or something. Oh, we'll go to the drawing board and see what we can we do. Made a, we made a Baja Blast isomalt cage once. Do you remember that? Of course I remember that. <laughs> it was encasing a Baja Blast panna cotta. Uh, oh, okay. my God. Uh, we used to be on the cutting edge. Now we're washed. Yeah, Mythical we're washed. Kitchen got washed. We're washed. <laughs> Hi, Josh and Nicole. Um, so I've been dating a guy for a long time. Congrats. Who Ripto. has been convinced by his parents uh. that he is lactose intolerant? Oh. Uh. And I have spent our entire relationship building a menu and buying the groceries and cooking surrounding his supposed dietary restriction. Um, I decided to start experimenting with small doses of dairy. Oh my and, gosh. Um, I hope she got an IRB form for that. There's been no <laughs> reaction whatsoever. And, um, If he knows that he eats something at a restaurant or orders something in that has dairy in it, he has a reaction. If I put it in the food that we make at home, he is none the wiser. And Uh I feel kind of bad about it, but... (laughs) You should. (laughs) Yeah. So I guess this is more of a confession than an opinion. Yeah. You guys have a good day. Okay, this is like the opposite. So it's like Munchausen's by proxy, right? Is this what we're... I'm not a doctor. A little bit, yeah. yeah I'm not a yeah, doctor, yeah. even though I would be a really good mm, one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> doctor Dr. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and Nurse Josh says, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> There's... So- I can't, I cannot condone this behavior. I'm so sorry. I, yeah, I stepping away from the science advice and into the relationship advice. Like, I've been married for a while and uh, like... Sometimes you really need to like give up your need to be right about some yes, things. Yes, thank you. you. Know? As like, an also as, married person, I yeah, agree. Yeah, and just like accept the irrational, crazy thing that they mm. insist on. Yep. I mean, if it's everything, then fine, you deal yeah, with yeah. it. But, you don't like, need to be right all the time. Well, as I, and it's like I'm sure I have idiosyncrasies that drive people crazy, but sure, uh, you know, the, t- to a certain extent, just accepting those about people is, you know, correct. A nice thing to do. 
You're right. Yeah. Now, yeah. I ain't married, but I'm hurtling <laughs> towards it. And I also have a fiance Uh-oh. with fake food allergies. Okay. <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. She's allergic to, quote, beans. But that is a very large uh, category. Okay. And so she's not allergic to, like, beans, right? She's allergic to something within a bean that mm-hmm. has caused a reaction to her before. Yeah. And when I say she's lying, she's, she's not lying. But uh, chickpeas she can eat. That's the one that okay. she knows she can eat. Yeah. Which Th- is those chickpea- are, like, kind of the highest protein beans. So, and, is and, it and le- when she's lectin? Uh, is that the protein that tends to cause negative reactions? Uh, I don't know. I mean, there lectin, there are lectins, but that's like it's like a different kind of molecule than mm. a protein. I would be curious: is her reaction like indigestion or like a rash? Vomit, like straight, like, oh, just okay. like spelling. So yeah, I mean, Both like <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> TMI. I, I, I get that with oysters. So uh, oh. unfortunately, um, I mean, so like there are uh, there are like. Basically, forms of soluble fiber in beans, uh, fructo oligosaccharides and stuff. That's like what gives you gas if mm-hmm. you have beans. Um, so, but it sounds like she's reacting to something more than 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 that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, didn't um, didn't Pythagoras die from eating fava beans? Or like yeah. My brother-in-law has that. Fava beans. Yeah. My brother-in-law, if mm. he eats or is near fava beans, he will die. Wow. But maybe not that dramatic. But like, <laughs> he cannot consume a fava bean. Yeah. It's some sort of like genetic thing in his like makeup. Huh. Yeah. 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 So anyways, she's allergic to beans, can right, consume right, chickpeas. Right. And I'm like, what about lentils? And she's like, no, I can't have that. And she's, mm. she doesn't know at all, but I just don't push it. And I don't cook anything with any bean or Great. bean-like uh, things. And when we go out to restaurants and we will go to like a traditional Lebanese restaurant or something. Mm. And she will go, can you ask them if it's only chickpeas and the hummus? Mm-hmm. And I go... Yes, this is. They are all speaking Arabic in the back. Hummus is literally Arabic for chickpea. Yeah. Mm. It's only that. Uh, and instead of saying that, now I just ask the server, and they Great. side eye me, and that's love. That that is love. That's love. That is love. That's Correct. a very that's mature love. take. Yeah. Uh, whether or not they can process lactose is not the point. It's about trust. Um, and <laughs> use. There's so many good lactose alternatives. Yeah. yeah. Hey y'all, this is Martin from Minneapolis. Two opinions. First, kale is a maligned piece of produce. Mm. Kale is just spinach that learned to stand up for itself. Everywhere I used to use spinach, I use kale. Second, really the only beverage you should have with a meal is water. You can have something else as an accompaniment, but you're not using it for lubrication. Mm. Those are my two opinions. I don't, I don't, Thanks for your work. How much Bye. lube does this I'm, man need? I'm, I'm, I'm confused that the like primary role of your accompanying beverage is lubrication yeah. and not uh, I don't know, some kind of <laughs> sensory experience. I mean, I guess uh, lubrication is a sensory oh, experience. But, uh, yeah, ish, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I've never thought about it that way. I mean, I think the idea is that it's not so much that the, 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 the tannins in the wine uh, help, the, help the food go down faster, but uh, <laughs> that you get like a an enhanced experience. You get synergy between like what you're sure. drinking and what you're eating and it could bring out different stuff or balance it. Uh, I mean like dr- drink water if you want to drink water but uh. Is he like just eating old crusty bread heels like an 18th <laughs> yeah. century oh, French know. laborer? You <laughs> know? Just like they actually make like uh, like thickeners to put in liquids, Thicket. so that like yeah. people like like very elderly people who mm. like don't have the muscle control Phagia? to swallow, yeah, can yeah. can swallow it. So like maybe he would like if he's cur- if he's like that concerned about lubrication, he might want. Uh, maybe yeah. hear me out. <laughs> maybe out, you know guy. what I think. I think my friend Martin. Martin is their name. I think they chew their food. And drink it. You know what I mean? Uh, I think they chew yeah. it, keep it in their mouth, and use the water to push mm. it down. If I'm in a rush, I'll do that. You know, I get, we've all been there. I mean, no. like, fr- from sensory science, I do know that there are people that are high salivators and low salivators. <gasps> oh. So you can't you can vary in <laughs> the volume of saliva that you produce. So it could yeah. be that he is lacking in that uh, arena. Incredible. Uh, it's very possible. Al Pastor Tacos and a real sugar Coke uh, is the best. Or the, uh, mm. what is it, the sangria soda? That's a sensory experience. That's a special thing. Even yeah. if you're not drinking alcohol with your meal, that's a fun time. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of, like, very uh, promiscuous beverage pairing. Oh, my God. Yeah, not just wine. Yeah. yeah. Nothing be- yeah. nothing better. Yeah. What about the kale and the spinach? Oh, the kale. Eh. <sighs> we Everything's so cyclical now, right? right? We went from kales. We went from kales just lining the Pizza Hut salad bar. Yeah, uh, ornamental. They were the, they were the yeah. world's largest uh, buyer of kale uh, for a period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we went to, you know, Beyonce wearing a kale sweatshirt. Mm-hmm. And then we went to kale sucks. And then now we're back to actually kale's good. And round and round we go. It'll mm-hmm. be turnip greens tomorrow, mustard greens the next. Well, I think we're people should eat kale. more turnip greens. I would love. I was going to say. I agree yeah. entirely. Yeah. yeah. Let's eat yeah, more yeah. turnip let's greens. Have, let's have a more biodiverse <laughs> uh, rainbow chard. leaf diet. Yeah. yeah let's uh, bring it. I love me some chard. Uh, 
You know what? I, I'll say I hate baby spinach. Give me that Ooh. mature spinach. Oh, I yeah. I want something that'll like spinach. stand up. Really? To, uh, I mean, talk about agree. spinach that's grown a backbone. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Blue, oh. blue yeah. sale of big leaves. I disagree yeah. with the both of you. Baby spinach is no leaps and bounds better than regular spinach. Well, are we talking about cooked spinach or raw spinach? Both ways. Oh, both. no, no, no. I I, not, cooked, uh, baby not cooked baby spinach. Oh it just turns God. into like nothing. Doesn't got no so taste. So does regular spinach. Yeah, but You're eating got, the stems. It's got like more texture. I can't I with you too. Like I just it tastes like can. char. There's more flavor. It's like richer tasting I almost. Can't. Kale, like regular curly no. kale. Does it? I mean, I, I cook with a lot of what? curly kale because it's yeah. just oh. there and available right. and I need right, right, greens right. and I put flavors in it. I like dino kale. Like uh, lacinato? La- lacinato. Mm. Cavalanero, I think. I think they're the same thing. I think they're the same thing. I mean, that's why I like like mustard greens, for example, because yeah. like yeah, yeah. it mm. does have like kind of more things beyond vegetal that you can enjoy. Uh, I will say, I run through about a head and a half to two heads of cabbage a week. <laughs> cabbage is delicious. Cabbage, cabbage, cabbage is guy. amazing. Big cabbage guy. Cabbage is having a moment. The I love world cabbage. has run on cabbage <laughs> for thousands of years, and I will continue that tradition. My people subsisted on beets, cabbages, and small frozen river fish, and that's how I want to eat. It, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> on that note thank y'all for stopping by the podcast and thank you so much to Dr. Ariel Jumps- Jompson Jompson <laughs> Dr. Ariel Jompson <laughs> Google that one Dr. Ariel Johnson author of Flavorama check it out uh, Ariel where, where can they find you elsewhere uh, oh online sorry Wherever. no like what's your location what's oh my location sorry <laughs> What's your, what's your that apartment info. number? Where I, uh, are my social security number. Uh, I, I live in New York, so come come check me out uh, in, in New York if you're in town. Hell yeah. Oh, if you want to be uh, featured on Opinions or Like Casseroles, <laughs> give us a ring and leave us a message at 833 I fudged the outro. My computer went to sleep and I was Googling other things. That's why this is clunkier than it used to be. Uh, if you if you want to be featured on Opinions or Like Casseroles, give us that. a ring. Nicole, just let me have this one. <laughs> See you all next time. <laughs>